let's talk a little bit about the .NET Framework. Now, I've been programming with the .NET Framework since the beginning, since the beta releases, and I've been looking at a lot of the documentation, the specifications. It is just a really fabulous way to work, and I just encourage you to really dive into this training to learn as much as you can. Now, the .NET Framework, this is really a lot. It's based on a lot of things here. Now, it's not limited to user interfaces and applications, of course, but user interfaces and applications are a really they're the lion's share of what you're going to be doing here. And you can see that it's split up against websites and web services. These are just really, really popular things that you can create and develop. But it's really all about creating and developing on the Microsoft platform or on a computer operating system as we move forward. It's really for developing just about anything that is going to be developed like any other computer language or any other library of code, but it's made to make things very, very easy for you. Data access, XML, these are all great parts of the .NET framework and the modern way that you can manipulate data and the modern way that you can manipulate XML is really, really untouchable almost at this point. If not, it's going to definitely be placed into the next versions of the .NET framework as we're going to see moving forward. You can also create fantastic code libraries that work with your team individually, third party, and you can sell them as well. Really, really fantastic. But everything within the .NET framework is working on a set of base classes. And these base classes are going to help you. We'll talk about this later, but they're going to help you with your data access and your GUI work. They're helping you with security, XML, SOAP, threading, file input and output, debugging, you name it it's covered within the base classes and these are what we use to make all these upper things happen at the bottom of everything is the common language runtime this is how everything is going to be run and we'll talk about this in detail as well this is going to deal with the common type system it's just as it sounds common types types are the objects and the different variables and things that we can work with within dotnet this is called common type system we'll talk about that as well the relationship and a common language specification, which deals with a lot of different things, including the ability to work with multiple languages, not just C Sharp. So it's really able to spread out to many, many languages. We're going to be exploring a lot of these in great detail. This is the whole point of what we're doing, .NET programming in C Sharp. We're going to explore this from the bottom up, and we'll cover all the different areas that you need to understand what's really, really going on. Within web services and web forms, now we're talking about highly optimized ways to connect our consumers and producers. This is on the internet or it could be within intranets. So it's really, really optimized for us. Web services are easy to produce. It's just a matter of thinking, coming up with the solutions. And that is really what it's all about. Web forms are great because they extend the desktop into the browser and this allows for really rich applications to be developed that can really help the intranets. The ability to work with web forms like you could with the Windows forms by dropping your controls onto a page is really, really a great way to work, and it's very easy and straightforward. Now, web forms really aren't the complete picture when you talk about the .NET web connectivity. This is just dealing with how you create forms, of course, but this is really talking about intranets. But you can really do all your code behind all the logic that you can place within ASP.NET pages. This is really, really a great way to work, highly optimized. The next version of ASP.NET is even more optimized and it's really fantastic. And it lowers the number of, of pages of code that you have to write, the lines of code. It keeps it to a minimum. Really, really great. Now, I do like PHP as well. And a lot of people would favor PHP. And to hear me say that ASP.NET overshadows PHP by leaps and bounds would raise some eyebrows with people. But it really does help you quite a lot because with ASP.NET you're working with C Sharp or Visual Basic.NET and then you can actually program Windows applications as well and that is what makes it really cool. You're able to do so much within the .NET framework if you know a certain language or multiple languages you're not just stuck in the web world. PHP is great for doing many many things but it's not going to help you program Windows applications. Now continuing Windows Forms, Windows Services, all these other applications and connectivity they often talk a lot about Windows Forms applications, but it's not just about that. It's about creating full applications or components within .NET in a very easy way for large or small groups, and everybody can take advantage of this great functionality. ADO.NET and the XML, this is making data processing really easy. You're going to see when we 
take a look at some of the things here. Just easy, easy to set up, easy to get going, easy to get your data the way you want it to, and so many advanced ways as well. XML, heavily used throughout the .NET Framework. XML is everywhere, and .NET Framework does not, does not limit it at all. Really fantastic. So, and again, ADO.NET really improved beyond the other technologies that have come out. It's been a nice road with Microsoft to get data to where it is and all the different technologies they've come out with. I've used many, many different technologies they've used since the beginning, and ADO.NET has really jumped by a leap and bound over the previous technologies as well. So let's dive in more and see how we can pull things together.